Let's call this meeting to order. Has everybody had a chance to review the uh, minutes from the last meeting, April 25th? Yes. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Motion approved. Are there any, or were there any questions before I say motion approved? No. Okay. I'll sign this thing real quick. Jeez, John. Oh. Okay, we have a demonstration from uh, uh, two vendors for the, um, to provide the software for our um, criteria or for grading the applicants. So WiseHive is first, and I'm not sure how they're going to run that. How, how are we doing that? We'll turn it, turn it over to them. I think they have control when they're ready. He is. Hello. Howdy, folks. Are you able to hear me over there? Yes. yes. Well, clear. Perfect. Well, definitely excited. You nailed it. Wise Hive is it? Uh, is the company I'm with, and excited to chat with you all. I'll, uh, if it's all right with you today, I'm going to really just do a very high level overview of our, about our software, what we can do, and you know, if at a future state you really want to go and narrow things down more specifically, you know, we can spend hours on any part of this with you. Recording uh, in progress. That was, that's. Oh, uh, yeah, certainly excited to chat with you all. I represent our public sector uh, here for the southeast. I'm in Austin myself. Family is from Tennessee, Nashville, Memphis as well. So uh, excited to be here with you all. Um, with that being said, let me go ahead and I'll just get started here. And if there's any questions at all as we progress, feel free to stop me. Um, but again, trying to maximize the time. Uh, if I can get a time check from whoever's, you know, going through this, uh, how long uh, do you want me to keep in uh, for today's demonstration? 15 to 20 minutes, Max. 15, 20 minutes, you got it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So are you all able to see my screen over there? Yes. Okay. Uh, so our system and our platform, we've been around for 12 years. We have a thousand clients under our name directly and we white label our software and resell it. We have about 3,800 when you take that into account. All of our system and our government work spans the gambit. Our most complicated client is going to be the CDC where we handle most of their grants uh, that are being dispersed. Uh, we also, in the uh, state of Tennessee, Memphis is one of our larger ones. We handle a lot of their municipal grants as well. Um, our gambit, we can go from very small, one program in our system. Uh, we have some that have up to a thousand different grants that they operate in our system. So we really can adapt to whatever your needs are in that regard. Uh, as far as the way our system is built is it's built to be very adjustable. So everything that we'll build out initially, you can make changes to on the fly. So y'all have complete ownership in it. There's no hard coded elements to it. So that means that if there's a criterion update or anything like that, you're changing the scoring rubric, that can be reflected in real time in our system. Um, just skipping through a few things in here as well is the way that we're laid out. So we have three major sections. Uh, we're going to have our submission and application portal. And this is going to be where the grant uh, applicants will manage their entire time through the process, where they'll apply for it, they'll do qualification criteria. And then as they progress through it, this will also be where they upload their reports on a regular basis for anything that's needed. So single place will they be uh, a part of the application process. On the administrative side, we have a wide variety of different dashboards and the ability to run complex analytics on the exact state of the grant as it's progressing, uh, as well as the overall funding elements. Uh, so we can separate this out into different views as well. So we can have like a, a commission view, we can have a financial view, uh, different permission sets as well, depending upon someone's role in the organization. And then lastly, for those that are not involved in the day-to-day -day on the program management element, we have the review portal experience. And this is made to be very simple. 
uh, when you get a review that's assigned to you. Uh, you'll go in there, you'll click it, it'll have all the ones that have been assigned to take a look at. Uh, you'll provide any sort of uh, feedback you want, any sort of scoring eligibility that you need, and we'll aggregate those totals so then you can make a decision and move on from that point in the process. Now, on the whole as well, is everything I'll show you today, we don't do piecemeal pricing. We don't have user-based pricing. We're on a program-based pricing model. So that means you can take this and use it in very extreme ways, have as many stakeholders as you need with it. Uh, our way that we'll launch this is we can get you folks live in a period of six to eight weeks uh, from the uh, period of when we sign a contract. This includes tailored training just to your system. We build it out initially for you, help you set up the ability to pull in data that you have previously utilized. And then ongoing, we'll provide support and annual audits too uh, for any grant changes that are going to occur on an annual cycle basis. Uh, so we're full tilt in the way that we offer our product. And lastly is we're both on the highest level of security. The same, we work with the Department of Defense, and you're also getting the DOD's level of security with the same ATOs that the federal um, uh, fat ramp requirements include. So that's all a part of what we're offering here. Uh, before I hop in, anything, is there any questions, folks? Okay. We'll keep on going. All right. So let's see here. Are you folks able to see uh, my screen right here? Yes. yes. Perfect. So generally, how somebody's going to access our system is one of two different ways. One way is we'll have an embedded form like what you're seeing right here. This is a copy and paste set of code that's entirely customized and white labeled to your municipality. So this will have your, your own logos here. Every bit of text and everything that you see will be customized to exactly what you want, down to exactly the phrase, password, sign up, all of that stuff. So this is one option. Uh, this would likely be embedded directly in your website. Very simple to utilize. But I'm going to take you to a hosted link as well. We can do both of these simultaneously. Uh, advantage to the hosted link that I'm about to pull up is that what you're seeing right here is this can be sent out like via email or whatever, and it will take somebody directly to it. So initially what I showed you is if somebody were to go in and sign up here, what I'm showing you right now is if they were signed in on that hosted link. Now, again, everything is going to be customized with your own uh, logos, everything of that nature. Initially, they would not see what is down here because everything relates back to a primary profile in our system. So this will allow for reporting back to the organization for every grant they've applied to throughout your history. Um, initially, up here, if you ever do have a need, we have on-the-fly translations to 180 uh, different languages. Everything that I show you, by the way, is not changing the price. It's just you can use it now or you can use it in the future. It's all included. So the first thing I'll take you in is to the profile. This is where it will initially drop individuals. Um, in this, we can have any text. I've been doing this for 17 years in the grant space. And just at WISE, I've been here for three years. And everything that I've seen, we can replicate as far as any questions, any drop downs, any of those things, uh, any of those natures. Uh, but general elements is that we have the ability for anything to be required in our system any sort of help text associated with it, any sort of narrative boxes, requirements for any restrictive elements like websites. We have an integration where we can pull 990 and 501 c 3 verifications for nonprofits directly into our system as long as you're collecting the tax identification number of those organizations. Uh, so that's certainly no problem. We can have as many upload fields as you would like. Uh, we can even limit those down to final type as needed. Now, we also have this idea of internalizing database structures. When I think about government reporting, you may want to report on census districts. You may want to report on any particular um, elements associated with geographic regions. We can import all of those into our system. So when you need reports of that nature, we can then slice by all of that data in here. 
As far as general information, uh, we're going to be able to collect any emails here because our system is going to automatically communicate with people depending upon where they're at in process or when reports are due. So it's always going to tie back to this email of the primary organization. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and push on through here as we're doing just a very high level overview today. So I'm in this case going to save that record. Now that I've completed that, it will then unlock what you're seeing right here. Now we're a color coded system. So this allows everybody to see if you're blue and this can be your city colors, um, like the city of Lansing utilizes their purple colors and everything like that. And so it really is completely white labeled for their uh, municipality. But as we go through here, uh, all of these are different grants that have been applied to. We can open these and close them at whatever time intervals you want, and we can restrict it down to a period of weeks where they're required to do an initial application before submission. Now you'll note down here these grade ones, and so I can see the historical grants that I've applied to here as well as an organization. So initially, may, we may bring this on for one program for you all, but we can expand and allow an organization to see the entire history of their grant making uh, with the, uh, the city of Murfreesboro in here. So I'm going to take you in to what it looks like uh, to see an active grant. Given our time constraints here, I'm going to be pushing a lot faster than I usually would. So if there's any clarifications after the fact, I certainly can uh, hit those. So in our system, what would likely happen is we'd have different stages as somebody goes in. So initially, what we have right here is a letter of intent that was submitted. We can request revisions at this point, and there's going to be an automatic email that will likely be sent out saying, thank you for your application, Jane. Here's what to expect next. Assuming it goes through an administrative review, from that administrative review, we probably invite them to get more specific. All of these things that you're seeing are going to automatically adapt to different devices, too. So this will look different on a cell phone or a tablet versus a computer. And as they go through all of this, it's going to save every 60 seconds, by the way. So if an organization gets, you know, cut away from it, they can always pick back up where they left off. Now, as they go through this next stage, maybe they go through a full application where we're getting that detailed information, line item budgets, things of that nature. We may want to go right here, and this is where we'll usually see something like a committee review, or we'll send it out for a scoring element to it. So we can confirm with the applicant, hey, we've received it, here's what to expect. Internally, we'll ping people automatically based upon the groups that they're in and the focus area. And this will send an email, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a bit, to the reviewers, and the reviewers will then be invited to click that link, and it will take them right to do a side-by-side -side scoring element of this. We could have multiple levels there where it goes to an initial uh, scoring or, or grading, and then it goes to a committee, and then it goes to a legal, and then it goes to a finance. World's your oyster. We have some people that do 80 different approval stages and review stages as they progress. Now, once they get to this next level right here, usually we'd be collecting award acceptance information. We can route agreements and draft them automatically via DocuSign and send to up to 10 different signers, and they'll upload back into this system. But you'll also probably collect at this time things about where should we send this, what we can integrate, if so desired, with accounting systems as well to show disbursement status in here uh, and other things of that nature. Now, likely at the end of that, what we'll be doing is managing that grant itself. Uh, we can do things for any sort of on-the-fly requests for communication, for amendments, where we want to make adjustments to how the finances are being uh, done. But we also will probably have reporting requirements. This is where we're one of the strongest in the way that we handle our reporting is everything's going to be separated out in whatever cadences you want. That could be a monthly report in combination with quarterly reports, a semi-annual report, and then an annual report. All of those different things, you can also decide for different organizations that they get different types of reporting requirements. 
You'll note here that as far as the due dates, we can send out reminders to these folks like 30 days in advance, seven days in advance. So they always know when something's coming up that they do have a report that's going to be due. Now, with that being said, uh, this is really where I just want to give that high level of the application process. Any questions on this side, y'all? Okay. Well, then we'll go ahead and, and I'll keep on pushing in the interest of time here and, and take us into the administrative side. So on the administrative side in our system, we have multiple different ways we can set this up. Um, all of the ways that you're seeing here, by the way, every single phrase, every structure, we can customize to whatever fits the way that you're operating. But up here to the right, people will get notifications, and this can be on like a quarter, I mean, a, a weekly digest, a daily digest, or whatever it may be. Uh, but also, the users are going to see that up here. We'll have a few different dashboard perspectives. So all of these are going to update dynamically as more information is put into our system. So we can look at, for instance, particular funds, where are we drawing those from, what's remaining in a particular fund, and what we have awarded year to date. Any sort of information about the requested funding amounts and all of these organizations I can click into and manage as well. Just to separate things out a little further, we generally are going to have submission level information dashboards here too, so we can see where are they at in particular process. Uh, we can easily slice by any piece of information in our system, so any regions, zip codes, things of that nature, uh, we can easily have that segmented as long as that's being collected. Generally, we'll have some sort of review capacity, too, where I can rank them based upon scores after we've averaged them out by the reviewers that have been scored those individuals. We also may have some things about reporting metrics. If there is ever impact reporting that is needed, like, hey, we've served you know, this many people or we've done this many projects or whatever it may be, we can easily put things in here to allow you to be able to aggregate any of these reporting elements and allow you to see community impact level reporting. Now, with that being said, on a, a very sort of final level, the way we separate things out as well is going to allow you to see exactly what's remaining in actual dollars for any particular grant. Next thing I'll take you to, and it's also important to point out too, this can be drag dropped, moved around, super customizable. And our permission setting can also restrict this. So this is a committee level view. If this is um, you know, whatever type of view that's gonna be relevant, we can easily make that uh, restricted down to what's relevant. Now, the next place I'll take you in is just one of our high level perspectives. So every single stage that you folks have in your process, we will replicate in here. We can have up to 180 stages as something progresses. And I can see exactly where it is and you can manually move things around or push things as needed. These will also automatically update from say a draft status to a submission status. A big thing here too, is that every time something switches from one stage to the next, we can have 40 automations that occur. So maybe that's gonna be email reminders to people internally, externally, uh, notifications to certain individuals. All of that's going to happen here. Now at any time, you can easily click into any of these records uh, as needed. So in this case, I'll see something like a full application, and all of the associated internalized information here. Now, one thing to note here too, is that on this side over here, we'll also have the data level of fields that are going to be broken down. So something to note is that every piece of data ever put in our system, you can then report on. So one thing that I'm looking at is maybe I have by folder in this case, but I want to segment out further by category or whatever it may be. You can easily filter using and or statements to get exactly the information that's going to be relevant to you. So if you just wanna see decline things, for instance, 
Um, and then once you have these defined, you'll then easily be able to go in here and save these views and then look at these views as needed for any type of reporting that's going to be required. Now, at any time, you can click into these as well. You'll be able to see a full audit trail. So when I say audit trail, this is incredibly aggressive. I can see exactly who touched it, when they touched it, what did they change it from, and what did they change it to. And this applies for the applicants as well. So you can really have that high-level government accountability audit that it's needed for you folks. Any sort of files associated with this are going to live right in here, as well as any activities that have ever occurred on that record. Now, this data perspective is also going to give you the ability to go into the individual organizations themselves and you'll be able to pull in their 501c3 information. So I can instantly port this organization's content in here. Now I know exactly their filing status and can approve that and have that on record for your folks as well. Any questions here so far, y'all? Okay. No, it's about a minute and a half left, but I don't know how much more you have. I mean, I don't want to Perfect. cut you off. Well, the, the rest is simple. All of this is going to be super adjustable on the back end once we get in here for anybody doing scoring associated with it, is you're simply going to be able to go in here, uh, take a look at anything that's been assigned to you. In this case, this is one that I still need to do for Tara May. I can download anything, have the ability to have a grid of all of the things that I've reviewed in the past. Now, in this case, for this one, all of this can be redacted at a field level. If I'm reviewing it, all of the different elements of anything that's been attached to it will also show up. When you're ready to provide feedback, you'll solve a side-by-side -side comparison right here. All of this on the right-hand side is going to be weighted variables with your own scoring system associated with it. So when it's completed, you may have comments here. You'll have a weighting score, and that score is going to then populate here and allow for any reporting on it. With that being said, that is the very high-level overview, y'all. I could spend an hour on each of these parts, and how many we do. Uh, so hopefully that, uh, that gives you a very uh, high-level taste there of our system. You, you did very well. You had 10 seconds left. <laughs> Uh, practice makes perfect, I suppose. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions for him? I've got a few, but I just don't know if y'all have any. Yeah, I've got a few. Go ahead. Uh, once, and I'm just going to call it an acceptance group, but let's say the initial group of organizations that, that we accept in, into the system. Um, as they are putting along, do you have any warnings or any kind of disqualifiers if they come close to disqualifying, if that makes sure. sense. Yeah, so they're going in, they're starting an application, like, but you don't know if they're going to be a fit for the type of funding you're providing? No, once they're already accepted, let's say they are a fit and they do get funding and they're reporting their quarterly reports, however we, we set them up. Yeah. Um, and let's say one of the organizations is not meeting the requirements halfway through the year. Is there a system of warnings or evaluations or s something along the way that we can set up that would say, hey, organization ABC, you're not meeting the requirements that you said you would? Yeah, generally in the reporting, we're going to have like what was initially stated versus an actual. So then on your on the back end side, you can then do a comparative analysis there, looking at the differential between what was proposed and what was achieved. That's going to allow the generation of just as you said, warnings to be propagated and sent out to these people as well that you're not meeting uh, the goal that you outlined that you would. Uh, so yeah, most certainly that's a possibility. Is there a per user fee or is it uh, unlimited to the city and then to the committee to be able to access it? 
Sure. So there is no per user fee. We don't operate in that manner. So you can have as many people as is relevant being in there. I believe our limitation is about 270 per program. Uh, we charge on a per program basis. And by per program, that would mean uh, per grant program that you're operating. Hmm. Uh, the training cost, is it continuous or is there a charge for it in the future as we learn more about this product? Sure. So the initial training is going to be done on your system uh, to whoever is relevant. Uh, that will then be recorded and provided to you for anybody that needs to come online. Uh, as needed, we provide more training down the line as maybe a new administrator comes on or a new you know, set of reviewers or whatever it may be. Uh, it's in our best interest to make sure that you're being trained so you keep on using our system and we maintain you as a customer. But there's no charge for the, if there is a new administrator, you just retrain them. Precisely, there is no charge for that. Support is also included. Is there anything that sets your company apart from any of the other vendors that provide the same service that you would want us to know? Yeah, our major area is that we're objectively the strongest on the review section. So any sort of scoring elements associated with it, that's where we really shine in the way we set things up. Um, the work that we do allows us to be very flexible without having to have any hard coding. So you don't need to have any staff on call or anything to maintain the system. We maintain it entirely for you, give you the tools and the training to maintain it as well. And then we provide a yearly audit on the system as well to maximize its utilization. So our customer experience leads people to stay on our system for uh, about 97% year over year stay with us. Um, and we're happy to provide you with references as needed, of course. Do, do we have a cost on this, on this particular? Okay. In general pricing, uh, it depends, is going to be on the variable that we can never anticipate is on uh, integrations. So if there's an integration need with one of your systems, we'd have to have that discussion on a one-off. Uh, but for a single program in our system, it's going to run on average $10,000. And then there's also the onboarding fee associated with it. Uh, depending upon the complexity, that can change, but usually it would be somewhere in the $5,000. Um, and uh, depending upon complexity. What was the $5,000? What, what did you say that is for? On board. On board. Oh, on board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our onboarding is fully inclusive too. So we essentially will just ask you for all the questions you're asking, the processes, and we'll transcribe it, fully build the system out, and then train you on it. So it's, it's a white glove experience with us. <clears throat> so the ten thousand is a. This is an original. Uh, is that an annual charge? Yes, sir. That's an annual charge. Okay. And the onboarding would be one time only, then. Okay. You got. It. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? It was a good presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you kindly, y'all. And if there is any follow-up follow questions you have, happy to provide those. And um, I'll actually be in Tennessee for two weeks uh, here in uh, two weeks. So I'm happy to meet with y'all and you know give you any in-person advice as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, folks. Thoughts on that? Wise Hive? 
Are they saying it's ten thousand dollars? That's what it costs. That's it. Ten thousand annually. I mean, there can be a little bit of variables in there. I'm not sure we're doing any integration or planning to do any integration with other systems. So we're looking at two processes. For lack of a better way to put it, interview applicants for acceptance mm -hmm. of funds. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, have those accepted organizations report in throughout the year however we set it up. So two, two different deals there. Yeah. I was watching Ryan. If there's any conversations there integration-wise, they said there might not be any. Our, one of our IT directors is here. <laughs> and so, it doesn't sound like there's going to be any um, integration points to the system, so it's just be a standalone, which will make that easy or easier. Yeah, so the, so the 10000 annually is probably what we're looking at. Um, and then uh, the training and building out is 5000 so it's nominal. Um, yeah, it's, but but exactly right, yeah. So it'll, it'll exist, it'll sit out there, they'll report back in for the measurement purposes so we can see what's going on. Is there, and then is there anything else? So acceptance, reporting, and am I missing something? Maybe well, it, yeah, we'll, we'll need to set up as far as, the city will set up as far as disbursements. So at some point in time, you know, you, you send the money out the door. So we'll have to set up the entire process on disbursements. But this system really is just for the selection of it and then the financial side will exist on okay. city systems. Yeah. I guess the trust, the trust system. It's a city system, but the trusts, bank accounts and things. Is Wise Hard who Chris Hewson uses? Is that the system they, they use? Fonda. Uh, they use yeah. Fonda, don't they? They use, okay. they use for their next guys. Yeah. Okay. The Predators Foundation uses Wise Hot. I just found that out. So, Mr. Chairman, I listened to the uh, Foundant uh, webinar. Yes. And it was very, very similar. I kept hearing the word customizable which is kind of a two-edged sword. That means that we can change it to whatever we want, but it also means someone has to get in there and set it up. Yeah. So I, I see a lot of work <laughs> in setting up either one of these. Uh, both of them have mentioned that once everything is submitted, then uh, various uh, committee members can then access it and score it based upon a weighted system that we as a committee would then establish. Uh, and from what I can see, there's a, there's a really a, uh, from, you know, obviously we only got 20 minutes worth of this. Right. We got an hour's worth of founding on the webinar. Right. But it's almost a Chevrolet or Ford comparison or a Coke versus Pepsi thing. I'm sure there's people that love one and hate the other, but I don't see it. It, it was very, it is very similar to what I watched also. Okay. Are the prices similar? I don't know the price. I don't there know we the go. fondant price. There we go. Do we know the fondant price? Um, I think it's a pretty similar breakdown. Okay. Yeah. Now, Karen, Karen, you used the second one that's coming, right? Before. Um, so I've actually used both systems. Um, Come up here so we can get it on, get on the microphone. So, and I don't know if you want to uh, link in, but I can pull up our accounts for each of those systems with grants that I've submitted. Um, so, as far as a, a user interface platform, both of those, uh, as you notice, are, are very similar. Um, processes and capabilities uh, from my experience on the user end of it. <clears throat> so. Okay. So we have two good, this is, this is similar to the exercise I think that the trustees went through in hiring the consultant to help us hire the outside investment officer. Two really good excellent candidates mm -hmm. and it, it, it comes down to kind of the thinnest margin because both obviously can do the job there were some pricing differentials. They took uh, a higher pricing one. Experience with municipalities that the other one didn't have, and that. But you know, there really wasn't a lot of 
of uh, municipality kind of thing in there. That's just what they felt comfortable with. So, you know, it, it was a hard choice. There was a lot of discussion, but at the end of the day, you know, it's comforting to know you can't do wrong. But it's hard to make a choice between the two when, when they're so similar and well well designed and good to go. So, I, I don't know if you have any recommendations on what you found, if there's anything that's one better than another one, or... Um, I, I think the, the probably, you know, only had one interaction, and that's through the applicant portal. Um, you know, so I think the, the other side of it that really is going to weigh in with you guys is kind of that review process and, you know, being able to um, access the applications and manipulate through those um, in order to do the review and decision making process. Um, so I think, you know, determining um, how you can determine, you know, uh, what system provides that maybe in a little bit more user friendly manner or, um, you know, the technical support that they provide um, as, you know, to, to the users in that process. I mean, it sounded like their technical support, they just, it was all included and everything was taken care of. I know one thing, when I've dealt with software, you always, I, 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 I'm envisioning something very simple that we look at every meeting and these are the applicants and these are the scores that it, the computer has spit out and if we want to wade into that a little deeper, we can, but that's kind of what I'm envisioning is something very simple so that we can make some decisions that way. But it, inevitably, it seems like every software I've ever dealt with, you think you know that it's going to have everything and then you're like, man, I wish it would do this. I wish it would do that. <laughs> so I don't know that you know, which one we pick is going to still have everything we want, but I won't know till we try it. Yeah, in the old days when you're writing <clears throat> software, you can customize it. Now that everything's in the cloud and online, kind of take what, what they offer. Fortunately, they offer a lot of robust things. So, it, you know, hopefully can find what is mostly needed by the by the committee to make the decisions they need. Are you aware of any um, things that might be more useful to staff members related to the comparison between the two other than us, uh, uses you may have or others in the city may have rather than the board? that could be valuable in comparison to two? Comparing I think the two. From a, probably from an administrative setup perspective, if that is landing on the, the side of the city to manage the administrative as far as working to get it set up to be able to interface um, with you guys um, to really identify um, how they provide the technical support, um, you know, uh, are, how accessible are they with that technical support? Is that, can you lift, you know, make a phone call to them and are they responsive? Um, is that done, you know, do you have to email them? So um, from an administrative side to me, I think um, that customer service technical support um, is really key. Um, I think I've heard him say that they manage everything. So I took that to read that if an applicant was having problems in the process and they needed technical support, mm -hmm. I'm presuming that though that they would provide that. So if a if an applicant was, was having issues with the system, would that be calling us or would that be calling the company to find out how those get resolved or or where those issues lie? The, uh, we'll be trying to compare pricing after we talk to Foundant, but their pricing has five categories based on the emails that uh, Mr. Tyndall sent us a couple days ago. Uh, do you have any idea which one of these five packages would be needed by the city to meet the needs of this committee? I think it's really looking at the different amenities and really kind of what you feel will 
be the most relevant. Um, I'd have to pull that up to really kind of offer some suggestions. Um, um, in, in some respects, you have a simplified process because you're only dealing with one grant period. So you, you're not doing multiple grant periods. You only, you're only you one and done. Um, so I think that would probably reduce the amount of amenities uh, that you would need in that process. But then also, in thinking to the future, as, as you continue to grow, um, what piece of those amenities can be added on as, as you grow with your grant making abilities and you guys might make the decision in the future to, you know, do two, two grant making periods, you know. Um, so thinking not about, you know, what, what can be built on in the future, what, what do you have to commit to at this point um, because it can't be added on. Mr. Chairman, do we even know if we've decided if we're going to do annual grants? Is that the way this is going to work? Or? I thought it was supposed to be annual One time grants. a year, annual? I thought it was annual yeah. grants as well. Do you remember the money changes? Well, I know that, but I'm just talking about every year. Exactly well, it'll just be one, like she said, one and done? Yeah. yeah. No do you have one of either one of these programs that would be easier for the applicant to do? I think from my experience, um, I didn't have any adverse reactions to either one of those when I've used them. I, they were both, um, you know, similar in that process. Um, the, I think it's found it that I'm going in doing an after grant report that's a little bit, you know, it's kind of different, but that may be on the setup end. It may not have to do anything with um, the actual uh, software system. It may be just how that uh, foundation decided to set up the re reporting questions. So whatever software we get, I assume we'll be assigned a staff, city staff member to yeah. help us oversee it we'll over yeah. and do that. Okay. We'll help oversee it and try and bring back when we dis when we work on designing what the committee's software package will look like. We'll get those questions, bring them back and have the committee weigh into them and be the, the liaison between the company and the committee to, to design everything. Yeah. Okay. Stay there. For that. I, I'm just thinking out loud here. I think we need to be able to make a decision when this is over because they were eight weeks possibly to get you on board. That's two, that's two months out, and the longer we wait, it's a, we've got to get this thing rolling. So, when will our next meeting be? While we're in there? To be ready. Do what? When do you look, can we go in and set our next meeting while we're seeing? We can go. We can actually go through. If anybody doesn't have any other time, we, oh, we still got 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. We got those three or four we could do. We can skip on down to. Uh, do, you, do we have time for the update on the trustees? Yeah, real quick. Uh, trustees met uh, a couple of weeks ago. Decided on a consultant to assist in their search for a outsourced chief financial officer. Um, got a contract, so on June 7th they'll, they'll go into contract for that and they'll start to really bring in, uh, uh, develop an RFP to bring in someone that will help them on the investments that the, that the trustee will make. Right now the money's held in um, uh, treasuries and uh, performing pretty well. I mean, it, it's hitting our estimates. Okay. So, um, I guess that's an upside to high interest rates. Um, yeah. All the downside is around. So. Yeah. That's where we're at on that. Uh, so June 7th, we are uh, going to present a budget to, to the uh, board on June the 7th. So knowing what the software costs will be in there, we're not talking about numbers. It's going to be hugely incidental, so we'll be fine. Uh, but we'll want to take that, put that in the budget, and take that to them on, on, in June if we can. Uh, other than that, uh, things progressing pretty nicely. On, on the uh, trustee side, Great. they're going, they're trying to get funded up a little quicker. But if y'all want to talk about meeting for next round, yeah. 
will there be a need to meet in a month, I, and, or do we need to wait till we have something rolling? I, I'm not. I think uh, probably the next step would be to decide on the software, get, this, get let the staff start to work with them, develop what needs to be done from a committee standpoint for that software to be developed, uh, or the interface would be developed, uh, and then bring it back. So that might uh, and somewhat on the software company and when we can fit in. Uh, but if we did it, uh, if we met maybe um, late June, early July, sometime in that time frame, and if it looks like it's going to be more time that we can kind of gather uh, survey. I would agree with that. that. Get another date. Because that would be almost eight weeks out that yeah. we would be getting an update as to the integration into our yeah. yeah, and as we go along, we may have distributes information. Mm -hmm. We need decisions. We'll need it because we have to be, have a public meeting. So when we, we need decisions. We'll need to bring the board back together. Right. If we set a date out in that time frame, we need to adjust that, then we'll have staff survey everyone and try and get on a calendar that fits for most people. Unless they're going off on sabbatical, then we just write them off entirely. <laughs> um, what's everybody think? Hmm? July 11th? July 4th is a Tuesday. Don't we like we like Tuesdays? We like Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Like good. July 11th would be great. Yeah. You good, Clay? July 11th, everybody? Let's say, uh, what time of day, sir? 3 o'clock. In the afternoon. I like yeah. the afternoon. Yeah. Let's uh, look at Chad over there and see if the room is available. Yeah, if not, we can room. always meet at the uh, community room and police headquarters. But July 11th, 3 o'clock. I believe so. I believe we're good. Good. Three, okay. right? July 11th, 3 o'clock. Right. Mr. Chair, I'll still be out of the country, but I trust Lynn to. She speaks for me. Thank you. We'll FaceTime you. Yeah, please do. <laughs> what time would it be? <laughs> yes. Midnight. Hey! Three o'clock in the Six morning. Six hour difference. Oh, I'll right. be fine. <laughs> All right. Have a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's good to know. So we need to I think Val raised a good question on, on the pricing for found it. And which one? Maybe we can narrow that down some as to what would be the best of their offerings here. Especially if we're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. If it's the same as Wise Hive. Yeah. I can't see Christy Houston going with anything but one solid. You know, and they're going to get the same kind of grants we're going to look at. Right. They're going, although they do them on a more big basis. And, and yeah, and larger. Yeah. Yeah, but still it's the local. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what package they have. I can find out. I have the other one. Yeah, but which of those... Oh, this? you mean in that? Yeah, yeah like Wait some, some of these, like collaborator. What is that? I mean, I, just do basic. <laughs> I know the obvious definition, but what does that mean here? I don't know. When Karen comes back, we'll ask her. She might know. Unless Angela knows. She's shaking her head now. But Karen will come back in here. I'll, I'll give her this list. There she is. <laughs> Have her look over and see. <laughs> Which, uh, uh, where did they get these names? Yeah, there we get the recruiting. Brian. Brian. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Consultant. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, where did they get them? Do you know what I'm talking about? That is amazing. Do services. Uh, like, uh, well, who asked? Wade asked. Ask a question about something. Oh, it's Wade. Oh, there he is. He didn't go far. The term collaborator. Um, so that probably means um, 
multiple users from an organization being able to get into the system and being able to contribute towards the grant. Um, so um, we are. whether you had uh, two people, um, it's an organization may have an external grant writer that they uh, consult with, so being that person being able, so more than one user being able to uh, interface with the system. Okay. Not for these people. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Can you hear us? Now we can, yes. Okay. Uh, welcome to our committee meeting and uh, we gave the last vendor about 20 minutes and then we did some questions and so I'd like to hear what you have. That sounds great. Thank you for having us and um, just a quick introduction. I'm Aaron. Um, I am a sales director at Foundant and I have my colleague Aaron Spevichek on the line. He is our solutions engineer. Um, he's been with Foundant for about 10 years, knows the software very well and will be able to give you a quick, efficient overview demo on what the software can do for you. So any questions before we get started? Nope. Okay, I'll kick it over to Aaron. We got two Aaron, so it'll be easy to keep track of <laughs> names. So thank you all for your time today. Really appreciate it. What we'll do is go through in 20 minutes. Recording in progress. Okay, so what we'll do today is go through in 20 minutes what, if I had my druthers, would take a couple hours to go through, right? Because we're going to skip over some of the nitty-gritty stuff that ends up being pretty important in the end. And I'll try to describe how we how we take care of those things as we're going over the system. But just know that there's a lot we can't show you in 20 minutes. Um, what we're looking at here is... Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Great. All right. So what we're looking at is just a very generic testing site. You came on board with a client. You get your own site with your own name, your own logo. You can control things like color. Um, and you also get a testing site. It's really important for us that before you launch an application, you try it out and make sure it looks good. So you have a place to do that where you can try things out without creating dummy data. You have to go back later and clean up. The system is an online grant management platform. We don't care what people are using to access the system. We don't care what browser they're on, Mac or PC, um, you know, tablet, mobile, Xbox. You can apply on anything. Right? Notice if I was on my phone, this screen gets narrow, and I can scroll with my thumbs. So we do what's called responsive design, where we look at the screen that someone's using and try to display information in a way that makes sense for the screen that they're on. The nonprofits looking for grants and create accounts for themselves, and we track both the organization that's applying and the individual. We want to differentiate that because there's going to be staff change. So you might fund the same homeless shelter year over year, but the grant writer or the volunteer who writes grants or the executive director, those folks are going to change. So we want to be able to show you the relationship you have with an agency even as the staff members at that agency change. Logging on to the system as someone from a nonprofit, I'll log on as a nonprofit who has an account. I can see my history here. So this is all dummy information. This is all made up. But you can see I've applied in the past. It's really important, especially when there's staff change, to show those relationships and show that history. And if you look at this grant, you know, we can get into this record from 2019 and see that there are different people at that nonprofit working on this grant. So this grant went through the system in 2019. Right, that's all visible. It was approved in 2019. That's all visible. Rebecca may have been the one to do the grant agreement. That's fine. But we can assign the final report to someone else. And really what I would do is, you know, say this. We're creating a folder for these grants. So this is my folder for that manufacturing skills grant from 2019. And that folder has different forms in it. You create the forms. You choose what goes in the folder. But the idea is simply that 
you know, you have a record in your system for this grant, we're going to give the grantee access to it. And we're going to use this folder, this record for a grant as a way of going back and forth with the grantee. To apply, I click apply. And as the funder, you control what opportunities are open, when they're open, whether deadlines are hard or not. Um, and, you know, these can pop up and down. We saw during the pandemic, someone got CARES Act money. All of a sudden, they created an application for hospitality, you know, relief grants for the hospitality companies in their town because that was helpful. You can just pop up the grants whenever you need to and take them down whenever you need to. Go ahead and apply. And because our time is short, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the application. But a couple things I do want to show you. You'll see right here at the top this collaborate button. Almost all of our clients use this because in the end, grant writing is a team sport. Even if I am a volunteer, not even paid, I'm probably going to get my wife to read the application before it comes in. And if I'm with an agency that has a few members on staff, I might be writing a proposal, but I might want a colleague's help with the budget. Or maybe I want someone on staff to help me with the goals for the grant. So as I'm working on this grant as an applicant, I choose who I work with. I don't have to bother you all, the funder, but I can add people to help me. Another thing that we want to do for grant writers or for anyone filling out proposals is make it really easy for them to see the questions. Because what we know is that folks who are writing proposals for you are going to write them offline. They're going to write them in Word. They're going to share them around. They're going to adapt what they've written for other funders and then paste their answers in. That's a very common way of working. So if I get to this proposal and I'm starting to think about what I should write and maybe I want to start playing with it, I can click this button, Question List, and just get a nice simple PDF that I can print that has everything on the form. So I'm not trying to print screen from a web page. And you're welcome to share this. There was some research done out of a group of nonprofits in Minnesota, and they looked at what the biggest pain points was. They surveyed grant writers. The biggest pain point grant writers identified with online systems is not knowing what to expect. So when you announce a new round of funding, you can share this link and so that people can understand what's expected of them when they apply. As far as the application goes, you all can build the applications. There's a very simple form builder tool. You add questions, you move them around, you configure them. So you decide what questions are on the application. You choose how much space to give people. I made all of this stuff up, and you're obviously not worried about grants across the country, but there are going to be categories of information that you want to collect at the end of the cycle so you can report out how many of our grants de dealt with youth versus adults versus seniors, or how many seniors benefited. If you know what you want to do with the data, you can build the questions in the systems so that you capture all of that. One of the things that we bake right into the system is the idea of measuring impact. And different funders approach this in different ways. You know, people get master's degrees in this level of, you know, like tracking the impact of grants. But what we have baked in is the ability for you to ask the questions you want because you build them. So let's say my goal is all right, so I outline this goal. I'm going to visit 50 shut-in seniors. That information is really important information for you all. You've chosen, you've asked me about it, right? You want to know before you fund me what my goal is. This doesn't really get at the impact, right? You don't know how many I'm actually going to visit or what I'm going to learn on those visits. So this information can be used if you give me funds and require me to do a report. So if I owe you a final report on this grant, it's probably going to display what my goal was and then ask me to respond to that. That way, as a grantee, I don't have to go back and look at the application to see what I said I was going to do. And when you all review that final report, you can see, oh, here was their goal. Here's what they did. Here's what they learned. You get to create the questions. So you can ask about impact in lots of different ways. What we want to do is just connect what's on the application to the report back about the work that got done. So you have a really clear picture of the impact of each grant. 
Now you'll see different types of questions. I'm going to upload information. I'm going to fill out numbers. There's, we can talk more about the kinds of data that you're going to collect. But one of the things I'll talk about as I'm filling this out is what role we as a company play when you're building out your system. Because you all have a process that you're using. You know what you need. But when you move to a new technology, there are going to be things that we do well that you didn't have before. There might be some things that we don't do well that you're used to. There's always a little bit of a translation process between the old system and the new system. And the role that we think we play is to be consultants, not on grant making. You know what you need, but on the system. So if you had a system and you were my client and you uploaded a budget, I'd say, well, that makes sense because everyone's got their own financial system. and having people upload a budget that's a lot easier they can just print it out of quickbooks or whatever they use for their budgeting but do you ever want to know like the size of the nonprofits because you can learn the size of a nonprofit by reading an uploaded budget but that's not reportable data so we're going to get into conversations as you're setting up the system about okay you know there's more than one way to track down a budget how do we collect that what's the best way to collect it to reach your goals and that's really important to us because most of our customers you all if you're look, I know it's a separate nonprofit, but if you're located in the city, you all are actually in a small minority of our customers who actually has IT support. But most of our customers are small family foundations, community foundations, et cetera. There is no IT department. And what we know, and we've learned this the hard way, is that if we can't support not just the software, but how you use the software, at the end of the grant cycle, if you can't run the report you want to run, you're not happy with us and you don't keep us as a vendor. So that support, not just technical support, but really conversations about this is what my goal is, how do I use the software to get there, is really important to us. And we're always open to those conversations because that's, that's why people keep us as a vendor. Um, I guess in the interest of time, I'm just gonna submit this application. The reality is that people come in and out, they don't do it all at once and we auto save like crazy so that they don't lose information the other thing that we do here, you can see I've missed a required question, so it's giving me a hard time. The fun, yeah. Yeah, I didn't answer that question. I'll say too, while that's going in, that as a company, we kind of provide, like, really, like, pride ourselves on continually improving the software. So we didn't use to automatically save. And we've gotten better at that. The incre increment at which we've saved has gotten better. We also look very carefully at logs. So we save uploads differently than we save other answers because we saw where the mistakes were coming. Um, then we started doing all this auto saving and you know, we could say, oh, good for us. But no, then we start looking at what the implications of that are. When we started doing all the auto saving, we started creating some extra, some duplication because people didn't realize it was saved and they, it wasn't clear to them Oh, here's where I go back. So now if I were to go in and apply to an application I already started, it would say, don't you want to go back to the one that started? So try to make it obvious. Not everyone, it wasn't obvious to everyone. We looked at the data and refined the system. And that's kind of common, you know, really like sort of built into how we work is like looking at the data, looking at what our clients are asking for us and continually changing the software to make it better. Because as we get better and we're at something like 2000 funders using the system, We've got a lot of information we can use to then inform how we build it, how we refine it, what we add to it. All right, so that application is in the system now. Someone applied. There are a couple of relevant views of the database at this point. And I'm going to log into an account of someone who is an administrator. So this is someone who can see the back of the database. This is probably not everyone on the committee. But this is someone who can manage things through the system. And here's what we know. We know that people who are managing grants, they, they have long lists they're working with. Here you can see. This right now is a list of 37 draft applications. So it's a list of 37 items. There's no way anyone can take that in and understand it all, right? 37 is just too much to conception. But we can do things like load the list in the order that makes sense to you. You might add a couple columns to this list. So if you wanted to look at which town within a county, or which population is being served, and sort it by that, you can do that. We try to look at what are our clients doing repetitively and how do we speed that up? So I can select this whole list. 
and do things like send an email, PDF, make PDF copies of this, export the data to Excel, move things around in the system. We're just trying to understand what do you do if you're administering and you have a list of 30 or 50 or 100, how can we make that faster? Well, if you have to do something 100 times, you're not going to like us. So what can we do to make it faster? Well, we can let you select all or select some and look for the kinds of things you do repetitively and just automate that. Here is that application that we looked at. It's submitted. And now I'm looking at it from the funder's perspective. You'll see here that there's a question on this application that was not visible to the applicant. Now, you all are subject to public records rules, so you wouldn't want to put anything in here that you wouldn't share outside the system. But there may be times where it's helpful to code the data. So maybe I'm not going to ask, maybe this is an um, example from, I worked with the city in Alexandria, Virginia, and they did a calendar every year. And there was always this call, well, we got to get pictures for the calendar. So you could have, hey, this would be a great place to get a potential picture as a piece of data. Not secret, but the applicant doesn't care. They don't need to see that. Your committee might not care, but you might want to be able to run a report later and say, hey, where were those places we thought would be interesting to get a picture? So all you can do is just layer in data. It's all public data so that the people who need it see it, but the people who don't need it don't see it. It just becomes like, you know, it would be noise. You wouldn't ask an applicant for this, but you might still record it. And we see sometimes municipalities will do that. I've seen municipalities during the pandemic in particular, when they started making grants to businesses, they would uh, need to check their database to make sure that they, business paid up with their property taxes. And so they would have a question internally that staff had to check off. It was required where the staff had to say, yeah, we checked the city's database and they are paid up because we're not going to make a grant to this motel if they're back, you know, they owe us taxes. Um, so there may be some procedural checks you can use this for. Now you can do analysis in the system. You can send applications back. We have some functionality I'm skipping where you can kind of treat an application like a conversation. Most of our public funders don't do that. In this case, I'm gonna take this application and I'll just do it for the one. Staff is probably going to do this for multiple at a time. You don't want to have to go one by one. But I'm going to assign this out to a committee. So here's my committee. I'm going to assign it to everyone, but it may be that Dave can't review this. Maybe Dave's wife works for this nonprofit. So you can have everyone on the committee, but then say, oh boy, this is, there's a conflict here. I'm going to pull this one application back. And by the way, there's nothing stopping, you know, here's Kathy on the committee. Kathy could be on the committee. She could also be applying. We see that happen where someone is running a nonprofit and applying, but is also on the committee reviewing. We'll talk you through. That's some of those details that we got to get into, but we'll talk you through it so that you don't, um, you know, in, in, endanger any privacy. But there's nothing stopping you from doing that if you need to. All right, so I mentioned that there was a couple ways of seeing the system, right? This is that dashboard for an administrator who has access to the back of the system. Committee members, we assume, don't need this level of detail. You don't need all these tools. There's all kinds of stuff you need to do to run the system that if you're a volunteer, that stuff just, it becomes noise. You don't need, you know, you don't need to know how we set up email templates and how we do award letters. Right? Someone needs to understand that, but if you're on a committee, that's less important. We don't want to crowd up your view of the system. So let me log in as a committee member. And as a committee member, when I come into the system, what I see are the applications I've been asked to review. So there are 12 applications pending right now. Here's that one that I, we just you know, went through, I can click start. And what I see on one screen, on one side is the application. On the other side is my review. Do you have a conflict? No, no conflict. And then here are the questions that I've been asked to fill out. You all design the rec this recommendation form or this review form, so you'll get your questions on it, not ours.
whatever your you know scoring right up all of this data is recorded in reportable data so it means that you know like everything else in the system you can get it out if there's a public records request um, and just like for the grant writers or the grantees we're automatically saving so if my toddler comes screaming in the room and I get distracted and I get logged out, I'm not, I haven't lost this comment. All right, so in the remaining time that we have left, I wanna show you just a couple more things in the system. And to do that, I'm gonna log back in as an administrator. So as an administrator, when my committee is meeting, I can see what's going on. So here are all my applications. And, you know, here's the one we were looking at. I can see it was sent to a 15 people it was assigned to, only one of whom is finished. We keep an aggregated score here. I mentioned that all that data is available. We have a tool because what we know is that, you know, this is nice, but there may be more you want to see, right? You want to see the details. So you'll run a report that looks something like this. This is a tool that lets you take all the data. Any of the data you've seen me enter is available in this tool. So this tool lets you build effectively spreadsheets where you format them with your data. Um, so here I can see some organizations and I can see my reviewers and what they all said. You know, and like the forms that you build, this tool, you build to meet your needs, not ours, right? Score can go anywhere. Maybe I don't need training content. Hide it, whatever. Um, what we want to do is just make sure that if you're meeting as a committee, you can start to see where do we agree, where do we disagree? And all this data is recorded. And if you need to, for public records reasons, you can actually lock the score so student people can't make changes. It's up to you, you might not. But um, you know, we have some public funders where they'll actually keep the scores open in the meeting and let people make changes while they're talking. Other public funders want there's like a review process and then they close it. And after that, you know, after it's closed, it's closed. All right, so the system, and I can go through the steps, will allow you to approve or deny grants. There's some functionality that helps you get ready for, if you had to get city council approval, you might do like a mail merge with a one page recommendation from the committee for the city or the board to approve. Um, this approval process that you're gonna see me go through is probably more complicated than you need to, uh, but you can build out your own. But if there are conditions on a grant that are unique to that grant, if you have to negotiate because maybe you can't fully fund a grant and so you're gonna let them change their goals, Anything that happens in that sort of de decision status, questions we have that we might want to answer next year, you can record whatever you need. Now, I said my approval process is more complicated. You all, I don't think, are doing matching grants. You know, we have people who use, who make loans or do all, you know, all kinds of contingencies and milestone-based funding and dollar, you know, funding where they're buying services. So this tool, which is in my system set up for matching and you'll set up for yourself and you probably don't need to worry about it at all because you probably just pay your grants all up front all right here's five thousand dollars end of the month but if you need to break the grant down to its financial components where's the money coming from what portion of the grant is dependent upon something there's a lot of detail we can get into if we have to then and this is again a much longer list than you're going to need but you can assign forms to the grantee so this list is me goofing around and is way too long, but you might use the system for grant agreements. Final reports, anything you'd like. These forms are very configurable, but they let you capture information from the grantee. That's where you start to get at that impact question. All right, so other things in the system. We haven't looked at emails, but there are all kinds of emails as reminders. So if someone owes you a report, they're gonna get prompted by email before and if they miss it, after the deadline. Um, there is an integration with Microsoft Word for a mail merge. So if you want to do a letter, you can use a template and fill it out automatically with data from the system. And then 
the reporting tool, which we looked at a minute ago for scores from reviewers, I mean, that's nice, but can get used in lots of different ways. You want to track future obligations. You might track what we haven't, haven't paid yet. Um, a lot of our um, government funders have very specific metrics they use, like the number of children who benefited from a grant. So here you can see this was this is all fake data, but this was from a funder in the state of Massachusetts, and they wanted to see here is you know, here this is dollars in gray, and the number of youth who benefited from a grant in red, and they they're tracking that across four counties. Now youth served. It's not like the system comes with youth served as a category, but they said this is important to us, so they added that question on a form. They had counties, and they added those questions on a form. And what our role is, is if you can articulate, yeah, this is what we want, we'll make sure that you capture the data. And by the way, you might say, you know what, there's some charts that I can need to do that you all can't do. So like the one I came up with earlier today, we were talking to someone, the statistical analysis they, they were interested in for their reviewers was beyond any kind of statistics. I mean, we can do some simple formulas, percentages and whatnot, but like... If you want to go beyond this, here's all that data. Get it into Excel or look if, you know, maybe the city's going to map it. Great. If the city has a GIS office, get all that data into CSV and the, CI, the GIS people just, you know, boom, put it on a map. Um, you know, get a, get a file to the city's website if they want to post it on the website. Um, so when people are going to use the system, you know, beyond what we can do, and that's common, but for all systems, you just, great, you control what you collect, you, you know, you can filter the data, you can add formulas, you manipulate the data, and then just get it out to the team that's going to use it in the format that makes the most sense to them. I want to talk a little bit about onboarding and technical support, but maybe just pause here for questions about the product. Um, I would just say, go on to that, and then we'll have questions for you. Gotcha. So when I started 10 years ago, if we were onboarding someone, we were on these Zoom calls, and we'd say, okay, click here, click here, and we would take people through and show them, like a trainer would. We would, you know, it was like we were in their office, only it was virtual, but it was just like one-on-one -on -one training. The reality is that, one, people are a lot better at computer, right? And everyone knows how to build a form. And the simple stuff we can now have the computer do. So, if you're in training, we can actually take you through the system. So this, if you can see it down the lower right-hand corner, it looks like a laptop with a mortar board or a graduation cap. Click that, and it pops up my classes. And I can go through training at my own pace. So, if I click in here, you can see I've skipped around a little bit, but I haven't learned how to add a user yet. Okay? Click Add a User and the system's gonna walk me through it. And we have a team that just does adult ed for technology that sets this up. You know, they put together, here's how we're gonna get people to use the system. And they collect data on all of that, and they, you know, they won't actually release a new feature unless they've documented it, and they've got it built into our training path. So we can show people how to do the basic stuff. But that doesn't cover everything, right? We can show you how to add a user, but you might wonder, hey, what are we gonna do with Sally, who is both an applicant and a reviewer, right? That showing you how to add a user doesn't really cover that. Maybe it does, but maybe it's not obvious. So if you look at our training path, we know when we need to check in. So what I'm pulling up now is the syllabus for learning the software. Getting started, overview, site terminology, managing users. We want you to go through here, and we're showing you where to click, where to click. After you get to the application stage, we need to check in, because by this point, you're going to have questions, and we kind of want to look over the shoulder and make sure make, make sure that, you know, you're doing things right, that you're getting it set up the way you need to. These check-in calls typically happen weekly. They don't have to. And they're not measured in terms of, like, you know, we're not trying to get you out of there fast. Our goal is to make you a happy customer. And so the folks that are doing these calls, they're not evaluated on how fast they get through those calls. Their job is to make sure that by the time you get through this, 
you feel comfortable in the software and you're going to get what you need. So when I train, half the time we get in here and we're like, you know what? You've got some new reporting questions and maybe you haven't worked on a piece of system, software that has a reporting tool like ours. Let's jump ahead to the reporting just so you understand how that works. I, I like doing that. I like to get people in the reporting early. Other times, um, you know, we get into the application stage and there's some big questions. Maybe you're changing things around and you go back to the committee. So we can stay here for as long as we need. This, this syllabus is not like a syllabus that has to work for everyone. This is how we start. And then as we're going down that path, we'll work with you to, oh, we need to spend time on this and the committee, great, let's jump ahead or let's spend extra time there. Now, the other question that if you're not asking, you know, I, I would expect if we had more time you would ask is, okay, that's great, Aaron, we get it all set up, you're giving us all the support up front, what happens in year two or year three? Because these people, right, they're supposed to be readily available. You should be able to get on their calendar tomorrow or the next day if you can't get a hold of them today, if you've got questions when you're getting it set up. We have a team that is about three times as big as that team working with our existing customers. So let's talk a little bit about the technical support and the, what goes beyond that. So if you're in the system and you're stuck for any reason, you'll see this question mark down the lower right hand corner, click that, you can chat with us. So there's technical support through the system. You can also, and if you'd prefer, and sometimes you have to, just get on the phone. So nine o'clock Eastern to five o'clock Pacific, we get people answering the phone. Most of them are um, college students. Um, they take a test. We make sure they know what they're doing. There's a, they actually have someone who's a funder who kind of is always on call for them if they have questions. So if you're stuck, you get unstuck. We've got technical support. If you're working on the weekend, we won't release a new feature until we've got documentation. So if you're wondering about that mail merge tool, I can type in the word mail and start popping up email best practices, nested list, universes, and if I even know that I want to do like a letter, that you can help me give me a little closer. Merge templates. So, all kinds of written resources, there are people on the phone. But there's a second level of support that we provide, and that's the success level. So, that person who's setting up the system with you, they're getting to know you. They're actually documenting how you use the system so that we know, and that's stored internally for us. Let's say that after the first year, you've got some feedback from the nonprofits, and maybe you're changing the way you're doing things, so there's a new impact measurement that you want to use. The technical support team, as wonderful as they are, can't talk you through that. They've not been funders. They've not seen enough clients to say, oh, there are three ways of doing that. Let me give you pros and cons. But if you come up with a new way of measuring impact, you might need someone to do that, to say, okay, there are three, just like you did when you set the system up. So we have a team and I can, you can email them through the system. I can kind of pull up the list. Here's the team. About half these folks were previous funders. The other group are people like Marius who have been around for a while. This is not a team where you can just walk into our company and say, okay, great. You're going to be consulting with customers. But if you have a question about that reporting tool and formulas and what are we going to do about old data and new data, you're probably going to talk to Marius. He started with an intern. He's a really great guy. He knows that tool really well. He's seen lots of people solve problems with it. If you're trying to go faster, maybe you're a little frustrated or you want to reduce clicks, right? Michaela, Rika, these are people who are on that team who are our efficiency experts. They're going to look at your workflow. So what we want to do is have the same kinds of conversations we have when we set up the system with our existing customers. The trouble is we don't know when to have those. So you reach out and say, hey, I'm starting a new grant cycle, and I've got some feedback from last year. Can I talk to someone about it? There's your team. So we want to do that same level of support that we do up front for our existing customers. And it's really important because if you don't evolve your use of the system, as your needs change, you're not going to be happy with us. You're not going to stick around as a customer. I think I'm over 20 minutes, and I'm supposed to talk for 20, so... All right. Yeah, it was a lot of information. Um, anybody have any questions for Aaron or Aaron or Aaron? <laughs> I see that there are five different packages available, the limited to the advanced. What is the cost of the standard package? 
I'm pulling that up for you right now. So the standard license, uh, which is a two-year license, is a total of 11550 for the license, and then uh, implementation and training cost is a one-time cost of 2500 I'll say just based on our notes, I'm not sure you need our standard license. You may be fine with our basic license. We can talk more now or in the future, but know that we're not going to push you into a higher license than you need. Well, for comparative purposes, what's the cost difference? What's basic? <laughs> basic license, also to your license, the total is 8500 and the implementation and training is 2000 How many municipalities do you serve now out of the 2,000 that you'd mentioned? We'd have to look. Um, I actually don't know if we, we don't internally differentiate between state government, municipal government, and then we've got a lot of quasi-government, like the federal, you know, Delta Regional Commission, which is sort of federal, sort of not. Uh, some of the state arts commissions, which are technically nonprofits. Um, so I don't even know that we could tell you the number of municipalities versus the number of government. I think government's 10, 20 percent of our customers, so a couple hundred. Out of that, just out of curiosity, what service did they do? They normally use basic, standard, standard plus, advanced. What are they? So most of our public funders, like I would guess that municipalities are going to be more in basic or standard. Some of the state agencies are in the advanced, like the. There's a series of advanced features that we're not even talking to you about that are not used exclusively by state agencies, but that's where, you know, if you're re-granting SAMHSA funds, if you're doing community development block grant money, there's a different set of features that we're not talking about with you all. Um, so if you eliminate those folks, it's going to be basic and standard. And you're saying that those numbers are every two years, not annually? That's correct. And only the license is every two years. There's a one-time fee that you never pay again. Mm -hmm. Right. That's correct. Excellent. Yep. Any other questions? Good. All right. Um, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. Nice to meet you all. Karen, should I follow up with you? If you're in the room? Okay. She is. I am. Okay. Yeah, we can get back with you. Yeah, we'll be back. Okay. All right, thank you. That's a, thank you. That sounds great. You all have a great day. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Okay, bye. bye. All right. Um, just so I'm clear, did the uh, Wise Hive was... 10000 a year? Yes. Is that correct? Is that what I heard? Okay. With the onboarding fee of 5000 Right. Okay. This, the basic package, is 8500 for two years with the onboarding fee of 2000 Okay. It's a half price. A half, basically, almost. Half price and a, and a lot of, it sounds like a lot of support available, either through information they've already developed or just people that you can get a hold of. Correct. And me and Lyle and, yeah. and um, Karen, but, uh, we all watched the webinar. I don't know if anybody else did. Did you? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Okay. I mean, it was from a fire hose, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was a, a lot of information. I mean, a lot. I mean, it, I mean, both of them seem very comparable. Mm -hmm. Price is pretty big difference to me. Does anybody have any recommendation? I like found it better. You want to make yeah, that He emotion? answered my questions, and I scratched them off as he was answering them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I like the evaluation process that, that they have already built in. I'm not looking at price, just looking at uh, you know the software and what it looks like it would do for us. Um, and that's just my opinion. Anyone else? So have you played around with both? systems. Okay. Um, from uh, information that he provided, um, he was spot on um, with his analysis about the question list as a applicant, like that is really important to me. So for him to point out that feature, I think was very positive. Um, and I don't remember if they had that in WizHive. They probably do, but um, being able to do that preview part um, is pretty uh, important. And the fact that he said that you could take that document and put it with your information. So as you're putting out information, you can go ahead and let, let applicants know. Um, and then the, the autosave, the fact that he reinforced that there was autosave um, was really important too. And it's on the back end as well with your administrative part. Um. So if you were making a decision, what would you what would you go with? Um, I I feel like that um, the foundant um, presented more information that I feel like was relevant um, to the work that you guys are doing, and mentioned a lot of information. Um, that I think uh, covers what you guys are looking to do um, and how you um, are, are going to use the system. And, you know, I think identifying um, some of the privacy conflict of interest uh, capacities, um, uh, the record share, the public access um, information. So I think um, that those are, are really important pieces to know. Um, that you're going to be able to work within the system for those aspects. Um, I, I thought the dashboards that they presented were a little easier to, to, to navigate and look at. Um, they weren't quite as confusing to me as they were as as WizHub was presenting all their different dashboards. I felt like yeah. these looked a little bit cleaner and more uh, user friendly as far as you know you could access the information pretty straightforward. Yeah, that multi tab folder that, yeah. that collapsed and opened and yeah. just picked out the topic and yeah. that's and, pretty impressive. And you know the fact that um, when he pulled up from a reviewer standpoint you had all the applicants there and you can click on and you know so you, you could you know, you might decide to start at the bottom of the list and move up, or you might decide to start at, you know, one particular place. So I think it allowed you um, some, some different factors to, to work within. One thing that I'm noticing on the basic versus standard, it says uh, the grants manager role, which I assume would be whoever at the city is managing that, that isn't something that you have to have with the standard. So. I don't really know what that does, but. Yeah, so I think that would allow um, a, from a back end administrative side to appoint some different people, different levels of access. Okay. So the fact that we might need to interface with finance um, and being able to give them some access to the backside um, administratively. So being able to have that, that option to have, have some different um, administrators. I think that would be a, a plus for what little difference that is. One question. I, I, I would imagine, and we can check with them, but if we did something like the basic and got to a point where we said, well, wait a minute, we do need some, I'm sure they would license a higher level and, and so we could, we could perhaps start a contract with the basic, but if we had to change it, bring it back and say, well, we do need a, uh, the role that Carl, you just meant grant manager role process in there. Sometimes, sometimes they're developing systems that allow 
at a state level or, or an agency level automated community where because we're doing it once a year we can still do that manually and not have a real issue. Jennifer might be frowning at me now. Less manual is better, but the only thing that I was thinking uh, while watching what they were showing was as they were showing the admin role on it that admin had the ability to see when sending it out to the reviewers what every other reviewer was writing and with the open meetings rules if everybody in here has the same role yeah. that means when the committee members who have the same role send out for review outside of open meeting right we would want that ability to have them be able to review outside of the meetings, but not to see what the other reviewers are saying until we get into this open meeting. And you're saying that function does that? It sounds like the uh, standard might, but I, I'm not as familiar with the program. I, I, I don't know what the difference in basic versus standard does on that. Mr. Chairman, I kind of agree with, I definitely agree with what Mr. Tyndall said, but I'm looking at the cost difference and it's not a whole lot. I'm almost thinking going with the standard with the idea that if we get in there and within uh, the two year when it's up again, saying, you know, we don't need this uh, robust of a package and coming down the line. The, quite frankly, you know, the difference is pretty nominal. Yeah. And so, but one thing we could do is have you know, the committee choose founded if that's the direction or, or WizHive, and then allow us to go back and really have a, a more administrative mm -hmm. discussion mm -hmm. with the company and, and figure out which package makes the most sense. Maybe some things that we need to do. They do a lot of state and local agencies, so I'm sure there is a mechanism for open meetings us because all the states really have the same thing. So we can discover those things, but. If you choose found it, say get a basic or standard what fits the most, probably go from there. We'll get it in the budget for the trustees and I'll, there's not going to be a, a real issue. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, okay. what's your second? Found it. Found it? Yeah. For found it. Mm -hmm. Not soon. Well, that's what Wade was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. A second. And the package to be determined by staff. Yeah, basic or standard, yeah, we'll stay right yeah, in that range. You set that as a... I, I would, and I appreciate the fact the guy said you might not need standard. Yeah. You know, I mean, they were there to sell us, period. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, uh... Yeah, we'll take their guidance, too. And they, it's not like they do enough with government agencies. They really understand probably pretty well what we would need. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So what we'll do is we'll uh, contact them, get their standard contracts. It'll need to go to our legal department and get reviewed, and uh, we'll make any changes we need. And as long as that's acceptable, we'll bring it back to the contract itself. Uh, we'll probably what we'll do, given the timing of the meetings, is to go ahead and set it up, uh, found it on our budget for the uh, June 7th meeting with the trustees. And, uh, and move forward with the agreement at that level and then, you know, keep everybody updated as we go. All right, sounds good. Any other business? Confirming July 11th, 3 o'clock. July 11th, 3 o'clock is our next meeting. Sir. Meeting adjourned.